What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media bringing you yet another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle today and our opponent is Zane, capital Z A lowercase N E, so I think it's still Zane. Not really sure, but uh, before we get into the teams, just want to remind you guys that as long as this video reaches 50 likes, we're going to continue those double daily Wi-Fi battle uploads for you, one Wi-Fi 6v6 like this one, and then one battle spot live like earlier this afternoon, which was posted as always. Uh, so taking a look at the teams here, uh, I've got a lot of UU stuff. I've got some OU stuff too, though. I've got uh, Weavile and Aegislash, definitely OU. And then uh, some underused stuff in Nidoqueen, Glade, Lantern, and Noivern. So pretty pretty interesting looking team for me. Uh, and on my opponent's side, we've got Porygon 2, Terrakion, Glizcore, Gardevoir, which is probably Mega, uh, Scrafty, and then the Scizor. Uh, so looking at this team, I definitely am thinking that Gardevoir is going to be the Mega. I mean, I know a lot of people run Mega Scizor as well. But not a lot of people run Gardevoir without the Mega, and this guy seems pretty OU-ish, so I'm going to say that that is going to be a Mega Gardevoir, not a Mega Scizor. So, Scrafty's going to be uh, leading on the opponent's side. I'm starting off with Weavile. That is not a good matchup for me whatsoever. I can't really do anything to this thing except hit it with a nice punch and then probably die in one hit. So I need to switch out. He's probably going to get a free Dragon Dance up. Um, as I go into my Durandal, which is my Aegislash, my beautiful shiny Aegislash that I bred myself. It's so gorgeous. Uh, he does go for that Dragon Dance, so he gets his speed and attack up. He's going to go for another Dragon Dance here. Getting a little bit greedy, going for that plus two, plus two, hoping that I'm not carrying that Sacred Sword, I guess. Or that I just go for a Swords Dance, which I do. I do go for the Swords Dance. I really thought he would attack there. But, uh, so it wasn't that bad of a move, but I am just going to go for the King's Shield here, expecting like a knockoff or a crunch, and not another uh, D-Dance. So he does go for the crunch, and that lowers his attack harshly, so that gets rid of those two D-Dance boosts. He still does have the speed, though. Uh, so he's going to go for the crunch. That's not going to kill me. It doesn't even do half. It does just about like 45%, and I am carrying the weakness policy, so there goes my attack to sky-high range. And uh, this Scrafty is about to get popped. Sacred Sword, that is going to be uh, super effective, so goodbye Scrafty. Uh, we're at plus four attack now, by the way. And now that I think about it, the reason that he went uh, Dragon Dance two times in a row was because he was probably predicting the King Shield, so it wasn't like he was getting greedy or anything, he just made the wrong prediction. Anyway, out comes the Terrakian. And these things are usually choiced in some way. Or, well, I guess sometimes I run Life Orb, too. That's the problem, is that they're so versatile. He does go for the Earthquake, though, so... Yeah, that's kind of a problem. There's not much that I can do to this thing, um, other than Shadow Sneak. I could switch out, I guess, expecting another Earthquake. But I'm just going to go for the Shadow Sneak to get damage. And it almost takes out this Terrakian, so I will trade... Durandal for that much damage on a Terrakian because this thing can just destroy teams, especially because most of my team is not very well equipped to be taking this thing on. Uh, so I can go into Weavile now. I'm pretty confident that I can take this thing out with any of the moves that I have. I am just going to be safe and go for an Ice Shard though, just in case he is Scarfed, because I don't think I saw Life Orb damage. I don't, don't exactly remember, but I'm pretty sure there was no Life Orb damage, so... Um, yeah, he could have been Scarfed. Anyway, out comes that shiny Scizor. Very, very colorful, I suppose. Actually, I like regular Scizor a lot better. I do not like this shiny Scizor. It looks like Puke. It really, really looks like Puke. Um, so he's going to go for the Swords Dance on the Switch as I switch out into my Noivern. And he pretty much has to go for a Bullet Punch here. But actually, he goes for the Protect, I guess, to see if I am carrying the Flamethrower. And I am. So... Uh, usually these things do. He does just does go for the bullet punch, though, to try to kill me. It's not going to be enough. And he is going to go down to this flamethrower, so not really sure why he stayed in. I do get a crit. That does not mean anything. Cesar would have been way dead. Way, way dead. I, I am a uh, choice spec set. I really thought he would switch out, uh, but he left his Cesar in to die, I guess. Or maybe he just thought he could kill with a bullet punch. That's also possible. Because Technician Bullet Punch at plus two is very, very powerful. And Noivern doesn't have the best defenses, so I guess it wasn't that bad of a move. Um, so out comes the Porygon 2, and I've got my Weavile out here as he's going to go for the Ice Beam. So I can take that very nicely, and yeah, that's not bad at all. 
Now I can just go for a knockoff. That was my number one priority, was to get a switch into Weavile to knock off this Eviolite. Thankfully, it just worked out so that it made sense for him to go for Ice Beam on Noivern. Uh, so I could bring in Weavile relatively safely, get that knockoff off, and then um, really only have to deal with toxic damage. I'm not uh, too worried about that at all. Pretty sure I can just kill this thing with an Ice Punch now that he doesn't have Eviolite, and it does. I think that was barely a kill, but a kill nonetheless. And uh, Weavile definitely putting in some work so far. Definitely, definitely. And things are looking good for us now. Uh, very, very good. So out comes the Glizcore. And this thing is a problem because the only thing I have that can take care of it is going to be Weavile. And he's going to try to Toxic Stall me right now. Um, so I go for the Ice Punch. He gets the Protect off. So I'm taking that uh, Toxic Damage. Now I'm dead no matter what because I'm going to take Life Orb Damage if I do hit him. Um, and he's gonna go for another protect, goes for the double protect right off the bat, doesn't get it, so he's gonna get smashed in the face with an ice punch, and he cannot survive that because I'm life orb, and it's four times super effective. I don't care how much defense you have. I'm not taking that from a Weavile. Unfortunately, with the life orb and the toxic damage, this Weavile is, yeah, out of commission, you could say. You could say that. I could say that. We could all say that. In comes Starscream. Um, I wasn't sure what he was going to go into. He ends up going into his Gardevoir. I don't know why I didn't know what he was going to go into, because this is his last Pokemon. So, uh, what happened was I didn't take a picture of his team. So, I didn't really know what was going on, and that is my fault, because I can't really do anything to this Gardevoir whatsoever. The only move that I have that's not resisted is going to be Flamethrower, so we'll go for that. Um, and it does okay damage, about 25%. He's going to go for the Moonblast. That was going to take out Starscream. Goodbye, Starscream. You did well, though. You took out Scizor in one hit. Took a plus two Technician Bullet Punch, so I'm very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. Out comes the Lantern, and this thing's actually carrying Energy Ball. I was hoping it was going to have Thunderbolt instead, and Lantern actually takes that very nicely. It only does just about 50%, and I'm okay with that. We're going to go for Skull, we're going to get the Burn, which is awesome, a little bit lucky, but okay nonetheless. And with lefties, I don't think Energy Ball is going to be able to kill. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. But if he gets max damage, I'm obviously dead. He does go for the Psychic instead, though. Changes up the moves, goes for the Stab. I guess I don't know why, but uh, does it matter? We're going to go for the Vault Switch. That's not really going to do a whole lot, but it's going to bring him into the range where Burn damage is going to finish him off. Uh, but just in case, I'm going to switch into my Scarfed Glade so I can finish it off next turn, no problem. The burn damage is enough, though. Uh, so the Gardevoir goes down. And that is it for that battle. So good match, Zane. I don't know how many Pokemon I had left. Maybe just, just the Lantern and the Glade and Nidoqueen, too. Nidoqueen didn't even get into the battle, so it was a 3-0. Um, although Lantern had almost no HP, so basically a 2-0, basically. Uh, but, like I said, definitely a good match. Very proud of these Pokemon. I definitely want to, uh, use Lantern a little bit more. I haven't gotten to use it a whole lot since I brought it onto, a uh, Battle Spot. So I'm gonna try to use it in a couple more battles down the road somewhere. Um, we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's it for this time, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, and don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, because remember, if we get to those that 50 like mark, we continue those double daily Wi-Fi uploads. Uh, but that's it for this time, and I'll see you for the next battle. But until then, game on.